Hi, I'm Callum from Anything Technical and today we're going to be looking at binding freedom inserts. Now what are binding freedom inserts? They are inserts that we install into the ski which allow us to interchange bindings between the different skis or types of skis that we have. Now we like binding freedom just because we think that they're made from a higher grade of material. Let's have a look at the process on how we install these into our skis. So to be able to install the Binding Freedom inserts, we're going to need a few hand tools to help us along the way. We're going to need a flathead screwdriver, an installation drill bit, a countersunk just to neaten off the hole after we've used the drill bit, a tap to accept the Binding Freedom inserts, they obviously are important, we need them. We need some upgraded M5 bolts, you can't use the original binding screws with the inserts, you have to use them. Obviously some epoxy, a mixing uh, pallet and the good old lolly stick and some Vibratite thread lock. We might need the clamp if we use the centre punch. If you are going to be installing the Binding Freedom inserts from new, i.e. the ski is completely brand new, you will need a jig or a binding template. This is obviously so you can get the inserts in the right place. So we're going to treat this as if these are brand new skis and we'll obviously run through that process of how we put the insert into the ski. So you'll need the jig which has obviously been set up to the correct boot saw length. Make sure all the feet on the jig are on the right way. We will then take the stepped drill bit Remove the jig. So as you can see, that's left us with a hollow hole in the ski. We will now have to use the tap to create a thread for the inserts to bite into. You have to make sure that this stays straight. Because if you tap this in at an angle, that insert is not going to sit straight in the ski. So we'll just start it off by doing small gentle full turns okay now the tap is bitten into the ski there so now we can do full turns half turn back full turn half turn back full turn and half turn back you just repeat that until you get to the bottom of where the drill has got to in the core of the ski Okay, and then just back that out. And as you back the tap out, of course, all the, the material from the core of the ski will come out, which is what you can see just resting on the top sheet. There we go. Now, two ways of removing that. You can turn the ski upside down, which is what I will do. Give it a good tap. And then just re-secure it into your vise. Now from using the tap, it will lift the top sheet ever so slightly. So you can use a countersunk uh, drill bit for this, or you can use a flat sharp chisel. I like to use the countersunk. Just helps to remove the very small burr from the top sheet. Sometimes you will have to come in with the flat chisel just to remove anything there. And there we go, that's nice and flat. So now what we have to do is just what I call a dry run. Just want to check that that insert will obviously go into the ski. Okay, so use a flathead screwdriver. Just make sure that goes all the way in. It obviously sits flat with the top sheet, which it does. So now we're ready to apply the epoxy. Now the epoxy is slow curing, so you have plenty of time to mix it up. So I've already opened this packet. And what we're going to do is just take a little bit out. You'd obviously probably use the majority of the packet if you're doing more than the one insert, which we're just doing today. Of course, most bindings have more than 
one screw pattern. Make sure you give this epoxy a really good mix. It will go like a cloudy colour. That's a good thing, that just shows that the two glues are mixing together nicely. Once you're happy with that, you can either use like a toothpick, but I'm just using a piece of sliced base, base material here. A little bit of glue onto there, and we're just going to apply it to the hole. Now some people do like to actually put glue on the insert as well, but I find that that just puts too much glue into here and you could end up with little air pockets, too much glue and as it cures the insert can actually come up and out of the hole that we've just tapped there. Okay, so once you're happy with that amount of glue, just going to offer the insert back up. Okay, you can just start to hand tighten that just to begin with and then come in with your flathead screwdriver. Now what I like to do is do a full turn again, half turn back, this just helps to bring any air bubbles out from in there, of course we want to trap them in there because that won't give us a nice secure tight fit. And again just make sure that that's flat and flush with the top surface of the ski. A little bit more. There we go, perfect. Now once you've repeated that process for all of the actual holes that you'll be drilling, my advice would be to, when you're allowing the glue to cure, turn the ski upside down. That way any glue that will come out of the actual thread of the insert will drop down onto the workbench and won't spoil the top surface of your ski. Okay, so we've now left the ski for 24 to 30 hours. Uh, I'm pretty happy that that epoxy will have cured or will have set by now. So one, one thing I like to do just before I apply the binding to the actual ski is I just like to make sure that that insert is absolutely rock solid and it's not going anywhere. So my advice is pick one of the M5 bolts which don't forget you're going to need because uh, you can't use the original binding screw with these. Just pop it into the insert, screw it all the way to the bottom. Okay, give it a good turn with a screwdriver. Obviously if the, if the insert actually twists then that means that the seal isn't 100%. If it stays absolutely rock solid, then we're good to go. If you'd like any more information on the Binding Freedom range, please visit the website. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel.